Once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Know what time of day you're watching, but this is Dave Graybill, fishamagician.com. And I've got a treat for you today. I'm on Lake Roosevelt with my good buddy, Kevin Whitty, and we're going to fish for Northern Pike. Now, Kevin, you were just talking to me and you say you're a, a fan of toothy critters. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the walleye fishery up here and a big fan of the pike fishery up here. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the, there's a lot of fans and I would like to introduce people to this pike fishing for a couple of good reasons. Number one is we need to get these fish, the numbers under control. We don't want these fish to make it their way down Lake Roosevelt into the Columbia River. And sport fishermen can really help. Last year, the uh, combined efforts of the PUDs, the tribe, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, removed over 3,400 of these northern pike from the reservoir. And sport anglers caught a third. They caught over 1,100 last year. And what makes it fun, not only do you get the fun, a fishing for them and catch them. Get you the get money. to eat them and then you get ten dollars for each one you catch. So that's a pretty good incentive. Yeah. And you know we, we get a lot of them by catch up here. Uh -huh. I'll catch them on uh, trout year. I'll oh. dodgers and coping here. I'll catch them on walleye floods. I'll catch them on bottom walkers. So they're kind of an added bonus for a lot of people haven't had an opportunity to fish for them or see one before. And, yeah. It's a nice surprise to get one in the net. That, I'm so excited. This is my first opportunity to fish for these guys. I got a tiger muskie once, which is a similar kind of critter, but these northern pike have a reputation of being really good fighters. Yeah, they, big takedown, yeah. hard pull. Uh, they're a, a phenomenal fish to go on <laughs> That's so great. Well, We've got four rods out. We're running two side planers right now, two out the back. We've got some big plugs on. We'll go into detail about that a little later, but I just wanted to introduce Kevin. And uh, cameraman today is my good buddy James LeBeau. And we're fishing for Northern Pike on Lake Roosevelt. Again, we're out here with Kevin Whitty this morning, and we are exploring for Northern Pike. And Kevin's got us trolling right off the mouth of the Colville River, yep. right? Just below the uh, marina at Kettle Falls. This is a beautiful stretch of water up here. This is just gorgeous scenery, all that good stuff. But we want to catch some fish. And we have already running these big plugs, these big bandits. Oftentimes, you're going to catch a walleye on that same plug. Yeah, most of the most of the stuff I'm catching pike on is targeted for walleye. Uh, I run the same plugs. Um, the big difference is we get up in some of the shallows later in the summer with the wheat beds. Uh, we'll throw big spoons, um, throw swim baits, throw blade baits up into the shallows. We'll throw blade baits up into four or five feet of water and see if we can back out off the flats and out through the wheat beds. That's got to be a lot of fun. It's, yeah, it's typically pretty big takedowns when they're laying up in the weeds because they're just sitting way to ambush fish. Now what we're running right now, we got four rods out, two of them aren't side planters, the two are just straight out the mat, but you're running a bandit and they are a deep diver. Running big bandit deep divers. Uh, these ones typically will run down, I think their max depth is about 27 feet. Okay. So these are anywhere from 100, and 100 feet back to 125 feet back on setbacks. Right. And we're trolling about two to two and a half mile an hour. Right. So Makes these rods dance, that's for sure. Yeah, and the takedowns are pretty phenomenal on them when you hit fish. <laughs> so what are some of the, you've got some blade baits here, you've got these big bandits. And um, some of the sonic bait fish uh, from Max Lures. Oh, okay. We'll throw those similar to a blade bait. And you jig those back too? Yep. Okay. You can either rig them off the front, rig them off the top. So you can do them as a vertical jig or you can do them as almost a swim bait jig. Okay. And we'll throw those way up into the shallows and bring those back out also. Uh, some of the smaller smaller plugs, you'll almost fish it like a bass, you know, fishing like bass where you're throwing plugs up into the shallows and bring sure. them back out. I mean, okay. anything from small Rapalas up to the big bandits. Sometimes if you really want to get crazy and you get into a pot of big fish, then you're Oh my goodness, look at that. 
head baby. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. And one of the things that I like about what we're doing right now is you're covering a lot of water. And that's the key with these things. Um, there's a good number of fish in the system, but the system's been maintained pretty well, and it's, it's a fairly new population to the, the reservoir. So we're not necessarily getting huge numbers of fish, but when you get into them, they're worth the time spent. Absolutely. Yep. So we try to troll a lot of it and cover water. Um, jigging and throwing blade bait, some of the shallow bays right now will produce. But typically, we start doing that more as you start seeing the reservoir fill back up and start getting new beds established again. Gotcha. So this time of year, in the spring, what are some of the uh, better known areas out of Kettle Falls? For uh, Colville Flats, which is the mouth of the Colville River, just it's south of the marine about a mile and a half. Right. Um, Singers Bay, but if you leave the Kettle Falls Marina head north above the bridge. Yeah. The bay off to the right hand side on the east side of the river. Right. Holds a lot of fish. That's a big, you know, 20, 30 foot flat up in there. Okay. Based off, kind of depends on where the water level's at, but that holds a lot of fish in there on the banks. And then the mouth of the kettle's always a popular spot. Those fish hold up in the mouth of the kettle pretty hard. That's great. Now I notice you're using uh, one of my favorites for a uh, line counter is the Okuma Cold Water. Great line capacity this type of thing. Great drag systems. What kind of rods do you like? Uh, right now I'm running the Lamaglass XCCs, okay. the 903s. So it's a three power. It's typically what I run for bottom bouncer walleye. Um, they're an awesome sockeye rod. So with you know with fishing these rods it's nice because I have versatility with them. I can use them in multiple fisheries and they're the right rod for all the fisheries. Right. Yeah, pretty soft action, but at the same time, plenty of backbone. Plenty of backbone. Um, last year we got into, I think we caught a four-foot sturgeon out here on one of them. Oh my goodness. So, you know, it's kind of a mixed bag when you come up here. You never know what you're going to get. See right. the walleye, burbot, pike, big rainbows. One of the things, too, that I, I, that, I that surprised me, of course, and I oftentimes overthink things, and I said, well, uh, should I bring some wire leaders? And, you know, we're fishing for bike. You need wire leaders. Not necessarily. I really don't. I don't. Um, I haven't ran wire leaders in probably four or five years now. Uh -huh. And I really don't have a lot of break-offs. Uh, if you get into fish, then you, you end up checking line really good when you get it. You might sure. get a tooth nick or something like that. I don't, I don't lose fish, and I don't run them because... It seems effective enough to run in mono. There you go. You know, that's another thing that was a misconception on my part. And I suppose that uh, that's part of the lore of pipe fishing is they're toothy, so you got to use a wire leader. No, no, you really don't. You really don't. Um, I think it's just a softer presentation without it. Yeah. You know, a little cleaner, a little nicer presentation. Yeah. Now, this uh, fishery, I mean, these these pike are in the reservoir year round. So you change tactics. You go from these flats that are as deep as 40 feet on up into the shallows as the water warms and we get into some. And the weed, you have to wait for the weed beds to really develop. Too. Yeah, and that's when they're really going to push up in there. I mean, right now they're out here on these flats and they. they this time of year they stay a little bit deeper and we get a lot of suspended fish. And then as the season moves on, then they start going up to the weed bed looking to feed. Well, hopefully that gives you some a starting point at least. If you want to come up here and try to fish for northern pike, there's some good basic tactics that you can try. And we're going to explore the, the Colville River mouth area. We might try some other areas today. And we're in search of Northern Pike on Lake Roosevelt. Dave got something. He's way back, over 200 feet. Oh, that's amazing. It's not a bad place to go to work every day. It's so gorgeous up here in the wildlife. So.
Man, James, you might have to take over here. <laughs> Are you getting wore out? You can do it, Dave. I got, I got faith in you. It must be a good one. Look at that. That rod's got a good bend in it. Uh, yeah. And they're just the head shakes with some big deep. I can't wait to see what we got. I know. I see him. There he is. See if I can get him in the picture. Oh my goodness. Is that a wall? Oh my god. That is a big one. Lordy. Holy smokes. Look at this Wow guys. Kevin, good job, man. Nice work. Oh my gosh, Jake. I can't wait to see it. I I can barely just see it. Holy good grief, that's a toad. Oh my gosh. Let me back up a little. Holy that smokes. Is a walleye. Good job, oh, guys. Baby. Oh, look at that guy. Up here a little closer. Man, alive. You got to put a tape to that one. Yeah, I'm going to put her in the box if she drinks some water. Yeah. Good plan. Let's get it out. That's a personal best, I'll tell you that. Kevin, you're the man. Well, you're talking good about job, catching buddy. some nice fish lately, but... I think that yeah, one... I was saying, I was catching big fish this year. <laughs> That's far and above the biggest walleye I've ever caught. In fact, it's probably the biggest walleye I've ever seen caught by myself or anybody else. <laughs> That's a big one. That's pretty good. That's a good one. Uh, you want to get a couple? Let's get some good still photos of this one. We're okay. Go out and then we're gonna let her go. Absolutely. Let's do that. Try to good try job, Kevin. Wow. Keep those genetics in the river. That's it.
Wow, she's still kicking. That's great. A good release. Tremendous. Job, tremendous. Woo wee! That's what it's all about. Absolutely. Oh man. That that'll make the day. I think I so. I don't think we have to worry about catching anything else today. Everything else is just a bonus. Well there's still a lot more to go catch. There's still a lot more daylight too. Kevin, thank you. Man, that was terrific. Yeah. All right, let's get the gear back out. Let's go find another right. one. <laughs> What do you got there, Dave? Well, this is a nice area for walleye, just like uh, we just hopped across the reservoir from where we were fishing earlier. And this is a nice bay. Um, when I was out here yesterday with the uh, Northern Pike crew, we, we took a good look at this. It's, uh, we've had a few bites and we finally put a hook in one. one of these Peter's on yeah, it. and you know that's what I hear about Lake Roosevelt. Obviously, uh, there are exceptions, <laughs> as we heard earlier today, to these really nice eater sized fish. Yeah, and, I mean, some of those are small, but we kind of consider those management fish, and they're good ones to, you know, take out of the system and let those thick hands go. Yeah, there's so many uh, of these juveniles in the, in the system. There's no shortage of wall in Lake Roosevelt. No, not at all. This is a pretty good little stretch of beach here, Kevin. You put us on, and we've had a lot of bites. Put that pretty consistent fish. Uh-huh. And I like the contour. You can do set a line and run a long ways. Not too much up and down. You got about a mile. Whoa. Beautiful. And that's a lot of small cobble and sand mix. It's not, you don't snag a lot. Yeah. And it looks like there's just a lot of eaters on this. Yeah. Or fabulous. Got a lot. Lake Roosevelt Wallet. Dang, this is a decent walleye beach here. I, Kevin, you uh, put us on a nice bunch of fish through here. It's been a pretty good beach for a week now or so. Yeah. Hopefully it's just going to get better. Yeah, well, it should as the water temperatures come up and the, the step forward. reservoir settles out. I like it. Like you say, I mean... That's just the perfect fish for the dinner table. They yes. fit so nice in the pan. <laughs> I do like these rods. Look at that pan. And my goodness, here we go. Mr. Wally. Yeah. That's a All right. That's a good, that's a nice eater fish. That's really a nice fish. Yeah. I don't have a problem keeping fish this size. If you get much bigger than that, I'd like to yeah. try to turn them back if I can. Sure. You know, I well, keep a few like... of them if they're bleeding or You're right. if they come up from too deep. But for the most part, that's about what we like to find for a big eater. Yeah, absolutely. Gorgeous fish. They're such great color and good shape up here. Oh, they're, they're wonderful fish. Yeah. Healthy. All year round. Nice spot, Kevin. Kevin, this was a tremendous day. It was a beautiful day. It's always worth the trip just to be up in this country. It's yeah. a wonderful resource. And great facilities, this park here in Long. And look at the result. You know, our intent was to go out today and look for pike. We started our day with a 12-pound wall. Now, for me, we had a spectacular day at that point. <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty much the, the day right there. Yeah, that was, that's just tremendous. That's a personal best for me in terms of size. And that big girl just swam away and was in great shape, which is always a great feeling when you turn her back to the reservoir. Yep. And, you know, I, I thought it was interesting. You really didn't have to change tactics and still catch walleye. No, most of the time we, we end up hooking a lot of walleye, even if we're chasing pikes. 
So somebody wants to come up here and put the time in and chase pike, you're not just chasing pike all day. You'll yeah. pull a lot of walleye and crankbaits. Mm -hmm. You'll pull smallmouth on crankbaits. Rainbows come by. You know, so it's, it's still a fun trip in search of pike. Right. Well, and then when we did switch over to bottom bouncers, then our catch rate really accelerated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's times when you're going to get just as many pike, but you obviously know where and when to change tactics and get good results. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, we chase quite a few pike, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, we try to put some fish in the box, so we'll concentrate our efforts on the pike, and then we'll switch over and go for walleye. Exactly. And, I mean, that's not saying we don't catch pike on bottom walkers, too. So, yeah. it's, yeah. it's always a chance to pull one in. Object of the game is having a great day, having a great company today. It's great to be on the boat with you, Kevin. It's been, we've talked about it for years, yeah. We finally got her done. We finally got it able to Yeah, and James has been great help today. This has just been a really fun day. I couldn't have better company. And look at the fish tacos we got lined up here. <laughs> That's always a bonus. <laughs> always a bonus. Well, Kevin, thanks again. Thanks, Dave. And uh, looking forward to doing it again. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. All right.